You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Uh, let's go, let's go. It's time to get in the zone. The Friday night lights are on. We got Justin Glenn as your host. Down to the whistle so close. Here come the highlights of show. It comes down to if we want to keep the bell, this is the game that we have to win. If we go out there and play for one another and do our jobs, then we'll be okay. Great teams prepare, and that's what, that's what we're doing all week. It means something to us that they also have that bell and they'll be ringing it on that sideline. We always talk about winning the moment, you know, and the moment is, is where I'm at right now. Mike Strong, highlight zone, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Friday night's in the zone, Friday night's in the zone, Friday night's in the zone, let's go, let's go, let's go. For whom doth the victory bell toll? Yeah, okay, it's only week two, but last year, the snyder Carroll game going a long way in deciding the SAC title chase. A Carroll win helping the Chargers win a share of their first ever SAC title, all while keeping Snyder from winning the belt outright. We're going to run it back here in 2022. Josh Ayan joining us with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Josh. Well, Glenn, last year you might remember Carroll beating Snyder by one point, 29 to 28 at Spooler Stadium. In that game, junior quarterback Owen Sheely got his first and only varsity start, leading the Chargers to victory. Unfortunately, Sheely passed away from leukemia this summer, but he was not far from the hearts and minds of Carroll fans tonight. Snyder at Carroll, it's your highlight zone game of the week. First home game since Owen's passing and the Chargers welcoming Owen's father as an honorary captain. As for Carroll's offense, no slow start this week. First drive, Camden Hershberger. Toe in the line with a 16-yard touchdown. Chargers off to a 7-0 start, but Snyder clawing back, scoring 11 unanswered. And that run capped off by a Luke Hopper touchdown at the goal line. But right before the half, Carroll able to march down the field, and Hudson Hoffner able to show up the strong hands and the speed. He is gone. Carroll taking a 14-11 lead to the half. Now Snyder does tie it up with a Nick Talamante's field goal and they're looking to regain the lead. That was until Jorge Valdez gets this interception towards the end of the third quarter. Carroll with great field position. And how about Jimmy Sullivan dicing up this Snyder defense here? He finds Jaden Hill in stride for his third touchdown. Chargers taking a 21 to 14 lead after another Snyder punt. Braden Steely. Taking this carry and able to outrun the entire snart, a Snyder defense 40 yards. That would be the game winning score as Carroll able to hold off a late rally from Snyder and take this one 28 to 21. We just had to put our emotions to the side and go up for our brothers on the field us right now. You know, I mean, everyone think about it every play. You're wishing he's with you. We just got to do what, I, what we have to do to come here and get a win. And we did that. You know, I really thought Owen gave a super prize tonight. Uh, we did our thing for him just like he did last year, but it feels a little bittersweet, you know, because uh, we miss our guy, you know. That's that's the test of, of your character is when you're in tough, you know, close, you know, you know, battle-tested games like this against good football teams, and, and you continue to play hard and you continue to persevere. Next up, Snyder hosts Concordia next Friday, while Carroll hosting Northside in week three. Glenn, take it away. Ah, speaking of those legends, we've had some good ones in the past few years between Northside and Dwenger. Would tonight live up to that history? Yeah, I think it would. Second quarter, Bodie Dickerson, uh, the former Saint, now with Northside, QB keeper for the touchdown. Still Northside trailing, though, 20 to 14. But late second quarter, Dickerson, you saw him use the feet there. How about using the arm to Tay Tay Johnson? This is pretty. Tay Tay down inside the five that would lead to a short rushing touchdown and this ball game tied 2020 at the half. Third quarter, Wingers Sam Campbell to Stellan Rustin here. He's down on the one inch line. Tobias Tipman would rush it in on the next play for a touchdown, but Northside with a big fourth quarter as the legends. What a victory to this team. 32-27 over the Saints. Moving on, Concordia dropping 32 points in week one. Homestead dropping an even 50. So uh, two high-powered offenses squaring off at Zollner Stadium. First quarter, Concordia's Eli Maddox to Ajani Washington for the first down, but the drive would stall. No points for the cadets. Later in the first, Camden Johnson 
He takes the football and Johnson would tiptoe his way in the end zone, a 17 yard score and Homestead on the board first up seven to nothing. Second quarter action, Tim Manigal. Oh, fourth down, they decide for the fake, go for the fake punt, but it backfires. It's Aiden Shepard of the Spartans with the interception. That sets up the Spartans at midfield and Mr. Peyton Slavin hooking up to Mason Auxier. This one goes 51 yards to the house. Home set up 14 zip. Spartans go on to win 31 7 over the Cadets. Let's go to Wayne Manor. Both the Generals and Bishop Lures looking for a bounce back performance here in week two. Second quarter. Generals up 15 to 10. Charlie Stansky looking for Braden McInturf. This kid's going to have a big season. It's a touchdown from 18 yards out. Knights up 17 15. Later in the second, watch Cadell Wallace. Hat on ball. Pops it right out there. Zamarion Jackson is Johnny on the spot. He scoops and scores. And it's 24-15. Knights in the lead. In the fourth, fourth and goal from the three. Watch the sweet hands of Nick Thompson. This is why he's going to be playing college football. It's a touchdown from three yards out. And Lures wins 38-15 at Wayne. Next stop in the SAC, it's Southside at Northrop. The Archers nipping the Bruins in week two last year. Would it be repeat or revenge at Spooler? Well, Bruins on the board first. That was uh, Jacob Gump with the field goal to make it 3-0 in the first. Let's go to the second quarter. The Archers driving. They swing it to Davian Gentry, and Gentry would pick up about 20 yards on that play for a first down. Guy Lee back healthy this week. Good to see him there. Later on the drive, it's who else but Gentry on the touchdown. But Southside could not beat Northrop for the second year in a row. It's 17-12, Bruins over Archers. Well, that is going to do it for the SAC in week two. But coming up, we've got some huge games outside Allen County. Last year, it was one of the best matchups we saw all last season as Eastside stopping a two-point conversion late in the fourth quarter to beat Adam Center. We had another barn burner between those two. Plus, how about some more football down at the courtyard? We're going to talk Norwell as the Knights with their home opener. All that and much more coming up next in the zone. We are the Adam Central cheerleaders. Stay tuned for the highlights of next. It's your home opener. It's, a, it's going to be a great crowd, great environment. I enjoy it. Make some memories with it. Okay. But these games are a lot more fun when you win. All right, set the tone early. Defense, you're up first. All right, kickoff team, get after them. Defense, let's get the ball back. All right, fly around, have fun. Let's go get them tonight. Uh, that was Norwell coach Josh Gerber in the locker room for what was a big night for his program. Expectations extremely high in Aussie in this year, and really for some good reason. The Knights 11-2 last year on their way to a sectional title, their first sectional crown since 2014. Now, if we're talking crowns, we had better head to the courtyard, right? After a win against Mississippi last week, the Knights with their home opener against Heritage. First quarter action, they go to the air. Leighton Bailey, the veteran QB, finding Connor Shelton. He's down at the three, and you can't give that kind of field position to this Norwell backfield. It's Luke Graff from three yards out, pounding it home, and the Knights up early 7-0. That was one part of that one-two punch in the backfield for Norwell. How about the second part? It's John Colbert breaking one off 59 yards on the touch. Norwell a big winner, 42 to nil against Heritage. Down at the landing strip, Adam Central ranked second in this week's 1A state poll. Eastside coming in at number six in 2A. This was a doozy. Ryan Black in the second quarter to Jack Hamilton. And this is a touchdown. But Adam Central down 14 to 10 at the half, although they go into the break with some momentum. Third quarter action, Black to Ryan Tester, and oh yeah, he's back into the end zone. It's a touchdown, 17-14, Adam Central now in the lead. Eastside, no give up. Carson Jacobs to his big tight end, Colt Gerke. That's a touchdown. Eastside now in the lead at 21-17. But in the fourth, Adam Central would pull it out. It's Black. Looking for Max Hamilton. That is your game winning score as AC beats Eastside in another instant classic 25 to 21. Uh, this shows that this team, this team's different. 
we're, we focus hard every week. We practice hard every single week, and we're just going to continue to grow. We got a lot of work on. I just saw that first half wasn't that good. But the second half, coach gave us a butt chewing. We came out and responded to that butt chewing. I think we're a good team, but we can improve a lot, and we're only going to get better. It's, it's truly awesome, but we're focusing on next week, and yeah. Those, those butt chewings will do it. Uh -huh. Staying in Adams County at Bob Wertherman Stadium, 1A number 3 South Adams at the Belmont Braves. First quarter South Adams scoring early, scoring often. Owen Warner to Brady Beal. That's a touchdown, and it's 8-0 South Adams after the two-point conversion. More from Warner. You're going to see the quarterback looking deep again. He finds Isaac D. And D scoots his way into the end zone as South Adams now with a two score lead on the Braves. More where that came from. Keep your eyeballs peeled for this one. Beal from Owen Warner. The ball is tipped, but watch the great hands from Beal. Are you kidding me? The defensive back couldn't believe it. South Adams, big win, 41 to 7 over Belmont. How about that snazzy new turf in Angola? Yeah, there's some buzz around these Hornets as Angola looking for its second straight win, this time against Leo. First quarter action, Gavin Willis for Angola with a first down inside the five. Later on the drive, why not give it to Gavin Willis? It's a good idea. What you talk about, Willis? He's in for the touchdown. Angola stakes itself to an early six-zip lead. They would add a field goal to make it nine zip, but in the second quarter, Leo gets on the board. That's Aiden Furnish with the touchdown. It's now a 9-7 ball game, and Angola falls to Leo in this one, 28-21. Lions get their first win in the Jason Dorfler era. A big game up in Napanee. East Noble ranked 13th in this week's 4A state poll. Northwood ranked 10th. Xander Brazel, yeah, helped them put up 50-plus last week in the opener against Plymouth. Unfortunately, good defense right there. C.J. Kuhn with the pick for Northwood. That leads to a little trickeration from Northwood. Natarion Tuggle, the wide receiver, throws this one up for the big guy, J.J. Payne. That's a touchdown, and East Noble falls at Northwood 35-14. to At a newly revamped Cecil E. Young Field, it's, it's pretty. DeKalb County bragging rights on the line. Garrett and DeKalb second quarter. Garrett's Calder Hefty to Xavier Nussbaum. That's a pretty pitch and catch, but it's 7-6 DeKalb. Watch this. Tegan Irk to Caden Pettis. A great grab. He got the foot in. That's a touchdown. 14-6 DeKalb in the lead. Later in the second, it's Hefty. Looking to the veteran Kyle Smith. He hauls it in. That's a touchdown. Ties it at 14 all, but DeKalb comes up victorious against Garrett, 42 to 20. Barons over the Railroaders. In Turtletown, Churubusco hosting Lakeland. Busco coach Paul Sade now in his 10th season leading the Eagles. My, how time does fly, and you know what? They do a little jet sweep action to open things up. Do the Busco Eagles. That's Cameron Rinker with a touchdown. He is in 7-0, Busco out of the gate. More from Busco. Riley Burrow, the quarterback, finding Rinker. And this is a huge game down to the five. It would set up a short touchdown for Busco to make it a 14 0 Eagles lead. Now, Lakeland trying to get something going offensively. They do here. Braden Holbrook to Carson Mickham. And Mickham breaking some tackles for a nice touchdown. But Busco tops Lakeland by 20, 41 to 21 in Turtletown. First of two stops in Wabash County, Bluffton and Manchester, both looking for win number one this season. Third quarter action is where we pick it up, and we pick it up with some defense. Yeah, Daddy Kunks has to like this. It's Andrew Hunt of Bluffton with the pick six. He's taking it to the house right there, 35 to zero. Bluffton in the lead and feeling good. Fourth quarter, Kamel Moore. Uh, the roster said this kid is only a freshman, but man, he looks like he can play. Maybe a bright future for Bluffton. 42 to zip Bluffton after the PAT. Manchester would score here. You're going to see Logan Eastgate haul the touchdown in. But Bluffton gets a win on the road, 42 to 14 over the Squires. Final stop for high school football. We got Oak Hill. We got Southwood. Dave Snyder and the Knights have reached double digit wins for the last five years. But uh, if you don't follow Oak Hill, uh, then maybe you don't know how good this team is. First play from scrimmage, Kyle Turan Turanchik 
with an 80-yard touchdown right out of the gate to Ranchick. We're going to see him uh, just in a second. It's 8-0 Oak Hill after the two-point conversion. I mentioned Taranchik. He does it here again, slamming one home, 16-0, Oak Hill in the lead. Now, when we saw, show Southland highlights, the question always is, do we need less Lloyd? No, we need Mo Lloyd. My man, Mo Lloyd, the quarterback with the keeper for the score, but it's not enough as Oak Hill tops Southwood 58-7. Stay tuned, your Peter Franklin jeweler, Gemma Knights, is up next. Stick around for more Highlight Zone. Yeah! It's week two. Here's something new. Let's end this show right. Here's your gem of the night. Yeah! Last week, what a way to start the season. Dax Holman hammering his way to gem of the night honors for week one. How about week two? Well, it is your Peter Franklin Jewelers gem of the night. And for this one, we're talking South Adams. Man, you saw it already, but it is amazing. Owen Warner to Brady Beal, the ball tipped by the defender, and he hauls it in. Take another look at this for this week's gem of the night. It is Brady Beal of South Adams showing off the good hands. That's going to do it for this week's edition of the Highlight Zone. We'll see you next Friday for week three.